of Discover with RAA Travel. And boy, have we got a ripper start to the season for you. In today's show, I am back in Tasmania to do a bit of kayaking around Bruni Island. We visit Interlaken in Switzerland, and Alex gives us some great travel tips about how to remember all the places you visit when on a holiday. But first, Callum and Themis are planning this year's visit to Tasting Australia. Every year, Callum and I head here to Victoria Square in April. And that's because it's the hub for Tasting Australia. Starting Friday the 28th of April from 11am until midnight, this becomes the home to deliciously diverse eating. It's where you'll find Town Square Kitchen, the Masterclass Pavilion, the dining room and a stack of local food vendors. Well, mate, what are you excited about Town Square this year? I reckon the chef's table, the concept of having, you know, maximum 20 people, you've got some of the best chefs mm. around the country explaining their dish, the provenance, where the produce come from, how they've cooked it. Sounds amazing. I agree. It's going to be a very exciting and intimate event, that one. What about you? Mate, I can't wait to get along to one of the many masterclasses that are on in Town Square. Um, there's over 30 masterclasses. The majority of them are wine or alcohol focused, <laughs> I must admit. Uh, but most of them are about wine. And I am, I'm looking at this guy right here, the greatest white wine you've never tried a.k.a. Chenin Blanc. I do love a little Chenin Blanc. And don't forget about the express lunches. Last year, that yeah, was absolutely. such a hit. 45 bucks for a main course and a glass of wine. Yes, absolutely. Please. In the beautiful Town Square kitchen. The wine's not too shabby as well. The glass of signature we had last year in Virgilia. So I can't wait to see what your lumber dish up for us this year. And of course, there's also Town Square Kitchen. Now, that's probably the most recognisable part of Tasting Australia. It sits in the top, the northern aspect of Victoria Square. It's that beautifully laid out equipped marquee there where they have these wonderful dinners featuring chefs from all around the world. Uh, I think that you can't forget about the amazing dinners that are going to be on there too. Oh, 100%. That's like the piece de resistance it of is. this whole festival. But then there's free events as well, like the Storyteller series where some of the same chefs featured here come and tell their story. And that's completely for free, so you can check that out as well. Absolutely. And of course, Tasting Australia is about so much more than just what goes on in Town Square. There are a bunch of amazing events all around the state. For example, Tasting Australia Airlines. You can jump on an aeroplane, head to the Flinders Ranges, enjoy an amazing meal, and then come back and enjoy Town Square again. And of course, you can go to Kangaroo Island or Clare or Limestone Coast. All the regions of South Australia really are highlighted. In fact, later on in the show, I'm going to be heading to Ambleside, be checking out what they're doing for Tasting Australia. I'm hang around for a little g and I think. Tasmania is one of those places that has so much on offer. Everything from great walks to long lunches at wineries. Today, I'm doing something a little more adventurous and heading out of Hobart to kayak across to Bruni Island. Everyone has their own idea of adventure. Rock climbing, skydiving, mine might not be as daring, but it certainly is spectacular. Toby, hi. Hey, Kelly. How are you? Yeah, good. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Ready to get geared up? Let's do it. OK. And well, we're just going to cruise around the southern end of Partridge Island and maybe we'll poke our noses out into the Southern Ocean and have a look towards Antarctica. Amazing. On our way, baby. <laughs> we're just going to head down the coast here. One of my favourite little spots. Oh, let's do it. The trip starts in Hobart. And we pick everyone up from their hotel or wherever they're staying in Hobart and we pretty much take care of everything from there. So, in theory, the moment you get into the, into the car, you shouldn't have to pull out your wallet or worry about anything at all. We transport uh, down to the Don Tricasto Channel and paddle across to Bruni Island, which is always a big highlight for people. And then we move to our lodge uh, where we 
situated each evening for the next three nights. And from there, we're going to go out and explore the different areas that Bruni Island has um, over the course of the four days. I know you might be thinking four days seems like a long time to be in a kayak, but with surrounds like this, who wants to be on the land? This is a really great area for us to spot sea eagles, wedge-tailed eagles, um, Australian fur seals, lots of other variety of uh, bird life, um, both seabirds and, and land birds. Um, it's a great place for us to see the macrocystis or giant kelp um, throughout these areas. And I guess, yeah, again, this is probably one of the great areas for beautiful white sand beaches. And then just around the corner, the Southern Ocean and the big sea cliffs and beyond. Straight out here is the Antarctic. Can you believe? We're not heading there today, though. <laughs> I think the real draw card for me is at the end of all this wilderness and wonder, you get to enjoy a freshly shucked oyster and a glass of sparkling on this magnificent white sandy beach. Cheers. Cheers. That was brilliant. Pretty nice way to spend your day, gotta tell ya. <laughs> Bruni Island just offers so much diversity from those beautiful sheltered waterways, uh, gentle kind of coastline with eucalypt forest, uh, white sand beaches to towering dolerite cliffs. It's really got a, an incredible diversity. If you're not a camper but you like to be outside and adventure through the day and then um, be well cared for in the evening, then yeah, this is a great trip for you. Coming in for landing. <laughs> the surf's taking me, this is awesome. We made it. <laughs> a fabulous way to explore Bruni Island and a great mini escape. Are you feeling it? Are you getting a little restless? Is that travel bug biting? Well, how does an action-packed trip to Interlaken sound? Tegan Nash is certainly enjoying it. Three, two, one! I am in Interlaken and it is the perfect spot for anything adrenaline based. I just bungee jumped. Look at this. Oh my gosh. So many more things to do. Let's go. Getting to Interlaken is pretty straightforward. We flew into Zurich and then from Zurich to Interlaken, it is a two hour train ride. You can download their local app and it tells you exactly where to go down to which train and which platform to go to. Trains are the easiest and fastest way to get around <laughs> Switzerland. Getting around Interlaken is super easy. You can walk most places. We are going to hire some bikes. Interlaken is a resort town, and everywhere you look, honestly, it looks like a postcard. It lies in a valley between Lake Thun and Lake Brians. You could hire kayaks and paddle boards and explore Lake Brians, which is exactly what we did. This is beautiful. So we've ridden around Interlaken, we've seen it from the train and on water. <laughs> and another way to see Interlaken yeah. is from above. <laughs> is Jungfrau Joch, which is the highest train station in Europe. It is absolutely breathtaking. I am lost for words. I love it here. I'm moving here. I live here now. <laughs> Go, Valentine. 
Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> this is my friend Sophie. She's from New Zealand, but she's actually from the UK. Kia ora. <laughs> <laughs> and today, we're going canyoning. We're going canyoning. It's going to be 11 degrees. It's going to be cold. <sighs> but it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be exhilarating. First things first, you want to be warm, but make sure you put your wetsuit on the right way. Not like my friend Gotchi. <laughs> Look at what is happening. <laughs> anything like me, you might just forget the one most important thing. Documenting your trip. You spent a ton of time researching, chatting to experts and making bookings. So let's look at some easy ways you can keep track of those magical tucked away places with your friends. Postcards. I know, they sound a little bit outdated, but you can find them almost anywhere. And rather than send the postcards, because, you know, that would involve stamps and a post office and a line, you can use the back of them to write down the restaurants you visited, the places that you saw, and that favourite little shoe store. But if you're a little tech savvy and pretty good with a selfie stick, why not start a vlog? and share your journey on the go. First, make sure you know which social media platform you will use to broadcast your vlog. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and invite your friends and family to join. And have a user-friendly selfie stick. That's not gonna take up too much room in your bag. Keep it interesting, you know. Fill the day in the life of the places you're staying at. Breakfast to dinner. If that sounds like too much hard work, then post the photos to social media. Again, have a thing. You will really enjoy looking back at these photos later. The beauty of social posts is you can tag the places you're at so people know exactly where you are. And how you got there. The other part I love about Tasting Australia is getting out to the events they host in the regions. I'm here at Ambleside Distillers to chat with Matt Dixon about the Oysters in the Hills event. Ambleside Distillers is a family-run business. Our ethos is all about traditional methods of distilling, but bringing them into a little bit more of a contemporary scene. So adding some botanicals that we either grow here on site or we source locally, or just trying to find some little special element to really highlight a different flavour profile in our gins. For Tasting Australia 23, we are revitalising our Oysters in the Hills event. So we've done it a couple of times pre-COVID, but pretty much we bring our good mates from Gazanda Oysters over from Coffin Bay. They serve up some delicious, freshly shucked oysters that we pair with some nice little toppings and some beautiful cocktails. So when you come to our Oysters in the Hills event, you get three freshly shucked oysters, you get a gin and tonic, and you get to kick back and enjoy some live music and some beautiful surrounds in the Adelaide Hills. And of course, these are the famous oysters. Tell me about them, Matt. Yeah, so Gazanda oysters, just from a little bay just outside of Coffin Bay. Yeah, Little um, Douglas Bay, right? Little We've got Douglas. Ones on my restaurant menu, they're absolutely beautiful. They are probably Australia's best oysters. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it. Today, we're gonna be pairing it with our Big dry gin, 
in a delicious red snapper. Also voted Australia's best spirit at the 2022 London Spirits Competition. Possibly Australia's best oysters with maybe Australia's best gin. Yeah, I'm, I think we can make that claim. <laughs> There's a bit of spice in there, but that is so, so delicious. It's kind of like punchy and almost like a little bit savory and umami, yep. but refreshing and cooling at the same time. This is gonna pair pretty well with the oyster. Yep, we're actually gonna do a red snapper topping for the oysters, as well as a little sorbet, and probably just a vinaigrette or something as well. So you might have to get your advice on some, some tasty toppings. Mate, if it means I get to come here, smash a few of these and smash a few of these, <laughs> I'll give you whatever advice you need. <laughs> yeah, beautiful, <laughs> sounds great. The great thing about tasting Australia is you can go to the high-end dinners if you want to indulge, or you can come to places like Ambleside, spend 30 bucks and have a blast. We hope you've enjoyed today's show. There is plenty to check out online and book. We'll see you next time. <laughs>